Okay, so welcome Anna, Emma to our chat today. I'm really happy that you are here with me talking about your experience as an empowered healer in the C program. But most particularly, what we're here doing is talking about frequency and our money frequencies. So, and I know you hold some close frequencies, connector is one of them, and we'll talk about the others as we go through. So first of all, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Yes, hello everybody. Um, I am an advanced flower and vibrational essence practitioner. That's what my focus is on. I'm also um, a priestess and I'm trying to combine the two in my work. So having done my diploma with you, Sarah, and now on the Empowered um, Seed programme, I'm actually moving away from the therapist model into something much bigger, I hope. And the programme is going to transform me from one to the other. Absolutely. And it holds all the pieces. Yeah. So thank you. Well, flower essences and priestessing sounds amazing. So um, let's um, tune into your frequency. So when we first... Um, connected for you to share this we were going to we talked about your connector frequency but when we actually dived a little bit deeper before we started speaking you felt that you wanted to share three of your frequencies because as part of the reboot your money chakra you if you have taken the free money frequency quiz you will have got your top frequency which is super 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 helpful and can really do amazing things all on its own when you take part in one of my programs, you get access to all of the different archetypes and how they stack up for you. So for some of us, we have a frequency that's way out in top ahead. And for others of us, they're a little bit more intertwined. So for you, Emma, you feel, well, it's not you feel, you have three archetypes that are quite intertwined. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I've been doing the um, playing around with these archetypes for four years now with you. So when I started the diploma, um, I did the, the quiz and I came up with connector, alchemist and nurturer in that order. And what I've really found interesting is the way they flipped around slightly at different phases when I've completed quite a major passage experience learning in in those four years so at the end of my diploma I switched from being a connector to an alchemist which makes perfect sense to me because I'd just done two years of alchemy um, learn you know everything about flower essences is alchemy and transformation because our journey through the diploma transforms us and not only transforms us on an inward healing journey but we're working with alchemical principles in creating flower essences um but at the same time also the connectors there underneath and the nurturer so all three just interweave and just one pops up um as the more dominant one at that moment in time and then um a few months after I finished the diploma, I realised I needed help with starting a business. I've, although I've been in um, leading management roles, I was a project manager and so on, I'm, I work within other people's structures. And as quite a, an ungrounded person throughout my life, um, I need the containers. Every process I've done with you it shouted to me that I need these containers. So the, the Empowered Healer program at the seed stage was perfect because that was going to be my container. Yeah. I could bring in this alchemist for transformation. But then once I'd been in that program, since I think last September I joined, um, having done the quiz at the beginning of the four days, I flipped back to Connector again because now I need that connector energy to connect with people out there in the world um, 
bringing my business to them. So that's come to the fore this time. But underlying all of those is the nurturer, because as a therapist, I nurture people. Um, as a my, I have five children, so my whole daily life is about nurturing people. Um, I've always been a nurturer, but I have in the th this four days has been the most transformational for me. I've done many little um, few day offerings that you've given over the years, but I don't know if I'm just in the right place at this time. It was I had so many aha moments. And I realised, looking back in my life, how when I've been challenged, I don't like looking at the negative aspects of my archetypes, but when I've been in challenging situations, I have defaulted to the negative aspects of both Connector and Alchemist because they're quite similar in their attitude towards money in particular, in that, one, it's boring, which it is for me. <laughs> And two, um, I, if you don't have enough of it, you can't do what you want to do in the world. Um, so, and the alchemist has that very um, expansive Aquarian quality. I, what I also found interesting that I realised this time around is how my archetypes, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be the same for everyone else, um, and this possibly becomes more apparent the more deeply you work with this system. But my alchemists actually tie into my three main astrological positions. I'm sun in Pisces, which is the nurturer. Moon in Aquarius, which is the connector, the air communication quality. And my ascendant is Scorpio, which is the alchemist. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I kind of played around with this myself and I can certainly see that in some of mine as well. Um, yeah. But people need to know their, their astrology deeply as well. But yeah. So it's really, it is deep stuff. What I, I think what I would like to add to your sharing there, and thank you for sharing all that you've shared. I really hope that it helps people to see the dance that we do with our magic is that it's deep work, you know, it can transform at, you know, top levels, like, oh, wow, I'm a nurturer, that's so cool, that really helps, but when we actually do the work inside as well, and make sure that we lead, because it's so, as you said, Emma, it's so easy to kind of like fall into our defaults, but one of the big points of doing the money frequency work is that we embrace our, what we're good at, it's a big pointy finger to what we're good at, not just in business, but in life. And of course, in a spirit, as a spiritual business owner, as a naturepreneur, we are our business. It's not something separate from us. We are it. So the more we own that, the more we can become magnetic with our offerings essentially it's a really amazing marketing tool just being yourself so um how has being a connector and an alchemist and perhaps a nurturer helped you grow your business well with the connector archetype my superpower is the one-to-one -one relationship so mm. as a with a therapist model um, you know, I can really add value to people's experience. It's very heart based. And uh, in terms of offering one to one consultations, which is my main business at the moment. Um, and that's a viable that's perfect. business model as well with as an empowered healer. It's a viable business model. So. But when you've got an alchemist playing around... <laughs> They want to transform the world. Okay, okay. So and, gives you, your alchemist gives you a bigger picture. Yeah. Mm. And also, um, I think because of the nurturer aspect, you have to be very um, controlled in your boundaries. You, you can fall into the trap of overgiving. And I have 
I I have so many times given myself for free. I've offered free sessions um, and too much so that people don't actually come back for the paid stuff because they think they're going to get a freebie all the time. Um, I, you know, and my freebies have been really good. So they've actually got their transformation through over giving of myself. Yeah. Um, so that's where the C program has helped me because I've been able to look at developing programs. And also there is only one of me. So if I want to impact the world as the alchemist, um, I, I need to set up programs where I can help a lot of people at the same time. So with your experience um, monthly on, on the step-by-step program and the materials, and then the support of the other people on the program who are doing different things, but um, often there's a common thread and they're more experienced or they have a different perspective that's really helped us, me to see how I can expand and one of me can actually give a lot of value to many people but not use all of my energy up not give myself away and absolutely. keep boundaries absolutely yes it is all about energy management and the normal way to start a business is one-to-one to be honest and that works really well but as you're saying and uh, we kind of hit a ceiling of I don't have any more time, I don't have any more energy. And my experience is, and I think this is what you were saying, when we take part in group programs, whether we're leading them or taking part of them, you actually get more than a one to one because you get everybody else's experience. You get the questions answered that you didn't know you had. And they give amazing ideas as well that you would have never thought of. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you found challenging about running your business that your frequency has helped you with? Is there anything about coming into the seed program that was like, gosh, I didn't realize that was how this running a business might be, you know, a bigger business? I think um, it's pointed out my challenges, which you don't really know if you haven't run a business, but if it's your frequency, it can cause a lot of problems. So tracking money okay. is I? like, I, I hate <laughs> looking at bank statements. Um, but what was very interesting is that this four days has made me look back on how I've actually disempowered myself. So um, about 10 years ago, well, I gave, I gave up a very well-paid career when I had my third child. So I kind of handed money. I was far too busy with little people. And therefore, divide and conquer, I handed the financial stuff to my husband and gradually reclaimed it. I, I got myself um, a bit more with it and sorted out when they'd grown up a little bit. But then 10 years ago, I had a very traumatic year where I lost all the three female members, older members of my family, my mother, aunt, and my grandmother, all in the space of 12 months and two of them in very tragic circumstances and unexpectedly. And what I did, and this is a bit like working with flower essences, um, you know your constitutional type because when you're sick you default to the negative aspects and at that time I realized I defaulted because I had to to giving all that away again I could I had to look after myself and someone else so again I just I can't look at bank statements I can't look at letters coming in I'm giving this all to you because it's boring it takes up my time I'm really not interested in it and um, I actually used my situation as an excuse because I could have carried on with it really but it was like hooray I've got an excuse (laughs) going to give this horrible stuff that I don't really like dealing with away and I never got it back again really um, so I, I disempowered myself 
through doing that, which are the are the negative traits of both um, and the challenges of both the connect and the alchemist. Yeah, both of them are kind of bit iffy on that account. Yeah, but, but, but being in the seed program, I'm reclaiming. So tracking. I mean, I can do tracking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not incapable. Um, so I've put things into place. You know, it's just simple like bank accounts, apps to track things. And that's it's it's just taking those steps so that it's um, all under your control, but also simple. So the programme has helped me with that because I've had steps every week to do an accountability. So I've done them. Um, and they're quite simple things like opening a bank account that's just in my name because everything was in a joint bank account before. Um, tracking with an app. Yeah. So that all my receipts and invoices go into an app. So it's done for me. That's giving it to something else to do. It's so important. It really is important because as we spoke about in the reboot experience, if money, if we are sacred, which I think we all established we are, and that the money that comes through our systems and therefore our businesses is an exchange for sacred work, therefore money becomes a sacred exchange. So why would we not look at money as a sacred flow? And this was big for me too, because I didn't, I didn't even know what tracking meant, to be honest, when I first started this. I was like, whoa, really? Tracking? What's that? I, I hadn't had any experience of that. So, and I think when we do start to track so many connectors and similar frequencies that I have spoken to have said things like, I just can't look, it's too overwhelming, it's too overwhelming. But what we don't realize is always we're carrying, even if we're pushing it aside we're carrying it around in our psychic system we're carrying it around in our energy system that's huge so just by going into your account which you've been doing emma and going phew i'm in here now now i know that's really empowering to know really empowering so well done to you and i really hope your sharing has helped other people who there's lots of us lots of us it's just something we maybe don't talk about and and doing that with money energetically it's like shoving your old, your unwashed clothes in the bottom of the wardrobe and shutting the door not looking absolutely and it's moldering and festering in there and energetically it's you know mm. it's the the hoarding cluttering energy that needs to be cleared yeah so yeah I and mean, that's what we always wish for anybody that um, does any kind of business mentoring whether it's with myself or elsewhere we have to get clear and current with our money situation uh, again like I think uh, other people have mentioned it in their chats as well if we're inviting other people to pay us money then we need to be really clear with our own money situation as well so it's all it's all source it's all source energy and what a gift well, I think that was my key thing, um, and that comes from the alchemist as well, is recognising money as sacred. And as soon as you said that on, I think it was day one or day two, that we're the vessel through which the divine pours and it connects to our gift and our talents. Once I made that realisation, um, somewhere out in the ethers, there was a shift because that very day or the next day, I was made an offer that was bringing through sacred money, basically, the, the potential for sacred money through my sacred gifts. Wow. And that happened day two or day three, I think. And But I felt within me I'd become a clear channel. Yeah, something had shifted. For that realisation to... Mm. pull three which I've I've never thought of it in that way before and it's a little bit what we were talking about last night in the master class as well is that how when we open ourselves and start expressing in whatever way that is the universe or the goddess or whatever god the all that is you know source whatever we want to call it 
rises to meet us always. Always. And that is extremely powerful for spiritual business owners. So thank you, Emma, for sharing with me today and for sharing so honestly. Um, for those of you watching, listening, please give Emma some love. It takes a lot of courage to come and chat in this way. So please give her lots of likes, lots of love, share your ahas with her. And let's start a beautiful connector alchemist type of conversation. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we say goodbye, Emma? Um, yes, I'm going to share you, with you my message from the overlighting diva of my healing business because I've stuck it on my wall. It was from day one and it was stand in your money power. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We have been taught so many lies. Mary Magdalene was a rich lady she had money and she uh, held up uh, Yeshua's ministry with her money you know so much as not just the stuff we know money's a big part of us and we're powerful as women mm -hmm. so let's stand in our money power thank you Emma that's so nice thank to you. you thank you thank you very very much